بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Firstly, um, I'm not the best amongst of the brothers to deliver this lecture but possibly because of um, the only thing that I can vouch for is probably many years of marriage that I can discuss this topic about searching for a spouse or ways of getting married. And we find that Al-Islam from the Qasid al-Shari'ah from the purpose of the sending of the Islamic legislation came to preserve five things. Came to preserve one's nafs, one's aql, one's nasal, wal ird, wal mal. Islam came to preserve your soul, your intellect, your lineage, your honor, and your property. This is the whole purpose if you study Islam, that everywhere you look you find that the, the legislations are there to preserve your mind, your soul, your body, your property, your wealth, and your lineage. And we find that marriage is one of those contracts that if you don't understand marriage, you will destroy all of this. Because as they state, love blinds. And in the state of your blindness, you will destroy your wealth, destroy your lineage, destroy even your own self. The amount of people who have committed suicide for the sake of a woman or the sake of a man. Destroy your property. Take on any lineage. Whatever comes to you, you're just willing to give up the whole of your life your family for the sake of this person. So that's why marriage is one of those important contracts that we really need to begin to understand, all of us. Those who have been married for maybe one year, one year, even up to 10 years or even 20 years. Life is an ongoing learning process. That is the way insan is. Throughout his life, he is continuously learning the misconceptions that he holds in his heart, in his mind, the problems that he faces, how to bring himself out of the problems that he may even bring upon himself. And we find that marriage, really the title of this topic should be marriage or mirage. That's the real essence. Because many people are going to two extremes. One extreme is that marriage, even amongst those people under the disguise of Al-Islam, is to go and perform this honeymoon, to go out on these exotic holidays, all under the Islamic holidays. And dunya has hit them from every single angle. The pleasure of this dunya, seeking of this dunya, luxuries of this dunya is all that some people are seeking even under the disguise of Islam. That's why many people are complaining that they can't get married because the demands are so many. I need this and I need that. And likewise, the men need this and they need that. And then we find the other extreme, that people are living in a bubble world. They think that my wife is not like Khadija radiallahu anha and you're not like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They think that everybody should be like the companions. Just because you wear a niqab, or you wear a thawb, that you must be amongst Ahsanul Khalq, the best of creation, the best of people. And this is another misconception, because truly those people who deal with the divorce rates amongst the practicing people is forever increasing. Not just amongst those people who are not practicing, but people who are practicing as well. Why is it? Why is it that there is no harmony in our society in marriage? amongst the common people and amongst those people who are calling to Al-Islam. And we find that this mirage, because if you study the meaning of what is a mirage, it's a disillusion or a misconception that you see 
in a state of a desert that you come up to this place an oasis that you feel is some water to drink but when you get close it's only the mesmerization of your mind the thinking of your mind something that you've been thinking about and likewise you find marriage that when you see somebody from a distance and you think that looks like a beautiful object and you begin to get closer and closer until eventually you find that you've been struck by something which is not a humble person which is not a soft loving husband it is a tyrannical oppressive person is there any contradiction in the verses of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly mentioned وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ He is the one amongst his sign that he has created for you wives from amongst yourselves that you may find tranquility in them and he has put between you yani rahma and mawadda affection and mercy verily in that are indeed signs for a people who reflect could there be a contradiction in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly stating لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا that you may live with her and another place inside the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf وَالَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا وَجَعَلَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا لِيَسْكُنَا إِلَيْهَا He is the one who has created you from a single person Adam alayhi salam and then he has created from his wife Hawa in order that he may enjoy the pleasure of living with her Now here in the Arabic language we find that even though the, the pronoun is referring to the female it carries the meaning of a male as well that just like you have pleasure with living with her she should be enjoying pleasure with living with you so whenever we mention refer to the male pr- pronoun we are referring to the female as well so now we should think that we are always quoting the male species it includes the female as well so the male لِيَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا that he may enjoy her take pleasure from her whether it be the sexual pleasures or whether it be the pleasures of just having comforting in talking and speaking to her and that's why we find the Prophet Muhammad as I'm stating when he would say to Aisha radiallahu anha كَلِّمِينِ كَلِّمِينِ speak to me speak to me and you find that this is a form of affection to listen to one's spouse and listen to what they have to say so we find that this is the essence of, of, a, of a zawaj or of marriage however we find that the beginning of marriage should be from the essence or the ruling of what is marriage because we find that once again people are going to two different extremes amongst mankind we find those people who turn to sodomy turn to homosexuality and even amongst the Muslims we find that people have established homosexual Muslim societies saying that this is a way of life and this is a true fact that these societies exist and we find that this is an abominable sin this is a sin that the people of Lut began who used to carry out this evil sin this is one extreme of people that we find in behaving in such a manner well, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly stated inside the Quran Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha we have created your mankind from a male and a female this is the essence of mankind according to the Quran likewise at the beginning of Surah An-Nisa that fear your Lord and we have created you from Adam and from Hawa and then from them both spread many mankind and much of creation of the human being and we find that these people أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَمْ بَلْ هُمْ أَدَلْ that these people are like cattle or more Australian cattle who follow the shahawat, follow the desires to behave in such a manner and then we find another form of uh, misconception is a rahbaniya monasticism to become a monk and we find that these people that they began to have dreams themselves that the monks would be tempted at night by a female demon called Sukubi and the nuns would be seduced at night by a female demon called Inkubi this is what they write in their works because the essence of man is to be with a woman and a woman to be with a man but if you lock your desires away if you lock them away then obviously you will have these hallucinations and begin to think that demons are attacking you male demons or female demons and then we find that the devil uses to, get, uses to gain possession of our souls that's what these people they write these Ruhban these monks and they began to state and even amongst the Sufiya the Islamic mysticists or the mystical people even though they should be adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah that they began to write sex is evil only for procreation and despise for pleasure that the only time you can go to your spouse is to have a child apart from that you should not enter upon your wife